Real World Mask Pro. Example 3, Replacing Skies. Alright, in this tutorial we're going to talk about replacing skies. Doing sky replacements is a pretty common task, especially for landscape and architecture photographers. We're going to show you how to use Mask Pro to remove this solid blue sky and replace it with this nice cloudy blue sky instead. Now you can use the same technique even if you don't want to replace the sky. All you want to do is adjust the density or change the color of the existing sky. We'll show you how to do that at the very end. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started. Make sure you have your target layer selected and launch Mask Pro. Doing a sky replacement in Mask Pro is just like working with hair. And when you think about the two, they're very similar to each other just on very different scales. Both trees and branches and hair are very intricate and can in some cases be semi-transparent. So we're going to tackle them in the same way. Let's start off by looking at what makes up our image. In this case, we have a couple of different zones that we want to look at. First are going to be the main trunks of the trees and their branches, and then also several different color families of leaf. So let's start off by working with the trunk first. I'm going to zoom in on the trunk region, use the green keep eyedropper, and sample the colors that make up the trunk. In this case, I've got a bright specular highlight. I've got a shadow side of the bark, as well as a darker colored shadow as well. Next, let's take a look at the branches themselves. The branches are actually a fairly dark color. Let's go ahead and select that almost black color and a very dark brown that make up the branches. Now let's zoom out, and we need to start looking at the leaves. And if we look, we've got three different predominant colors of leaves. We've got a dark orange, a bright yellow, and a green family. So using the zoom tool, I'm just going to zoom in on each one of these family of leaves and pick them using the green keep eyedropper. We'll grab a light, a dark, and a middle orange value out of the orange family. And let's zoom out. Use our zoom tool again. We'll pick the yellow family of leaves. And we'll grab the colors in the yellow family and zoom out. And one last time, zoom in on just the green areas. And let's pick a few of those green colors as well from light to dark. All right, there we go. Now we've picked all of the colors that make up our keep section in the image. Now we'll do the opposite with the blue eyedropper. When we look at the background, it's a fairly strong graduated blue. It goes from a very light blue on the right to a very dark blue on the left. And if you look at the drop color palette, you can see there's a pretty big difference between the sides of the image. So I'm going to grab a couple blues out of the middle just to make sure I've got a good sampling of all the blues that make up my sky. There we go. All right. Now, let's grab the Magic Brush tool, make sure our transition is set to soft, our threshold to less, and that all-important color decontamination is turned on. Now, I want to apply the Magic Brush to the entire scene. I can do that simply by double-clicking on the Magic Brush. Depending on the size of your image and the speed of your computer, this might take a minute or two for it to do its work. I can use the Apply All option by double-clicking on the Magic Brush or any of the other Magic tools in Mask Pro as long as I want to apply it to the whole scene. And in this case, as long as there's none of my drop color on an interior part of my scene, I can go ahead and use it. Now if I was working with a person photographed against a blue background and they had blue eyes, then I wouldn't want to use Apply All or their eyes would disappear and I'd have to paint them back in. But in this case, where I have none of the blue color on any area that I want to keep in the image, it's safe to go ahead and use the Apply All command. There we go. Let's go ahead and take a look at it up close here. Here we are at 100% against transparent. Let's go ahead and take a look at the mask by going to View, Mode, and Mask, and see what it looks like. There we go. So we zoom in, we can see we've done a pretty darn good job here. There are a couple areas that we can probably improve on, and this is one of the benefits to previewing in mask mode. Wherever I see this little bit of dark along the branches, it's a little bit of a color that I didn't pick in my keeps. So I can grab my green keep eyedropper and just go ahead and sample that color. There we go. Once I pick that color, let's see if I have any others I need to worry about. I'll just grab another one out of this bark just to be sure. We can see that's almost the same gray color. Now I can grab the magic brush tool, make sure the tool mode is set to the auto erase restore dual mode option. It will automatically paint back in that color I added to my keep color palette. Also, if I added any colors to my drop color palette, it'll add those in too. Let's go ahead and double click on the magic brush and see if we can paint in some of that bark. There we go. You can see how we are able to recover quite a bit of that bark information. 
Now I've got a little bit of clouds over here on the right hand side. I can remove those using the regular brush tool, set to erase, and I can paint away those little wispy clouds that were in the original sky that I don't want in my new sky. There we go. When we're ready, let's just go ahead and apply and send this back to Photoshop. There we go. There's our masked trees against our new sky. Let's zoom in to 100% and take a look around. You can see how we managed to keep every little leaf and every little branch and how it blends in realistically with our new sky. Mask Pro has done a great job and made sure there were no edge halos or blue halos left around any of the leaves or branches. Now that my foreground and background are on separate layers, it's easy for me to adjust them too. Let's go ahead and grab our new sky and make it darker using a levels adjustment layer. Once it's open, it's easy to go ahead and adjust that background darker or brighter without affecting my foreground. And I could use this same technique if I wanted to, just to adjust the original sky. What I've done is I have another copy of the original layer. I'm just going to turn these two guys off. And you can see right here, I've got just a copy of the original background with my new trees on top of it. I could now use an adjustment layer on that copy of the background the same way I did with a new sky to darken or lighten or change the color or any adjustments I want to against the original sky without even doing a sky replacement. By using a duplicate of the same layer, I'm able to affect two different areas without having to make a complex selection in Photoshop and can still take advantage of color decontamination.